Hello, and welcome to the update on Iowa's Senate races and 2nd Congressional House District. In an election that gripped the nation for almost a week, Joe Biden was announced as the next president of the United States. Trump actually won Iowa with 53.2% of the vote. Now in Iowa, we have seen some surprising results on the senatorial level and in the 2nd Congressional District. For this Senate seat, the district went from D plus 25 in 2008 to R plus 9 in 2014. The 2nd Congressional District House race is razor thin. Let's take a look at the specifics for these House and Senate races. Hello. The open seat in Iowa's 2nd Congressional District is playing a surprisingly significant role in this election. Democrats around the country were victimized by and ultimately lost in part due to the party's national rhetoric of defunding the police and being sympathetic to socialism. It seems the Democrat we predicted to win, Rita Hart, might not have been spared. Despite focusing on less divisive topics such as healthcare and education, Hart was likely hurt by the nationalization of the race, which is a medium term factor, meaning that individual candidates can't control it. While the race is yet to be called, it is clear that Democrats underperform after setting high expectations for the House and the next Congress. Now, we will go to Ricky for more specifics about the tight race. The battle for Iowa's second district has to be one of the closest races we've ever reported on this station. The race has been called for the Republican candidate, Marionette Miller Meeks, who's pulled ahead in the state. With such a small population, Iowa's second district's outcome depends heavily on each individual vote. Miller Meeks leads by less than 100 votes, further reflecting the nationwide sentiment and division between Democrats and Republican voters alike. We'll have to see how this race goes as Hart's called for a recount. Uh, we'll get back to you in a bit. Thanks, Ricky. When it comes to the Senate race between Ernst and Greenfield, we predicted that Greenfield would take the race. All polls show that this is going to be one of the closest races in the country, looking to flip this Republican seat. Analysts such as myself believe that Iowans were being discouraged from the Trump administration enough to step away from party lines. However, Ernst took the race with a six-point lead. It's clear to us now that Greenfield, while taking the most populous counties, did not take as many votes as predicted, and polls nationwide incorrectly biased Democratic voices. Thanks, Anoush. This race definitely didn't go as we anticipated. We noticed there was a sense of frustration with President Trump in the national mood, and we expected that that would lead enough Republicans to vote blue, especially considering that Iowa is a swing state. However, that didn't happen, and Joni Ernst was able to maintain her seat. When you think about it, the Senate incumbency rate in 2020 was 90%. So it's not really surprising that that happened. Additionally, like you said, the Democratic bias in the polls was 2.8%. So it's clear now when we look back that Teresa Greenfield was not going to do as well as we had initially anticipated. Thanks everyone for that analysis. This has been a fascinating election year and Iowa clearly has been no exception. Now that a recount's been called for, we're looking forward to seeing how the House race turns out to see just how much of a margin the Democrats can hold on to in the House this session. Stay tuned for updates on the race.